वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट री ऑब्जॉर्बसन इन किडनी ओके एंड द फर्स्ट टॉपिक वी विल डिस्कस दैट इज री ऑब्जॉर्बसन इन प्रोक्सिमल टिब्यूल ओके हेयर आई एम राइटिंग प्रोक्सिमल टिब्यूल नॉट राइटिंग एज यू प्रोनाउंस proximal convoluted tubule because whole proximal tubule is not convoluted only its 60% part is convoluted and that part is called proximal convoluted tubule and the remaining 40% is straight okay so this is known as simply proximal tubule okay the so 40% is straight what will happen at let this is our lumen and this is the pct associated cells okay and this is our pctn that is pericapillary tubular network this is lumen of tubules okay and it is the cell of tubule what will happen first let this is the first step okay and from this the second and this third step this is the interstitium okay as you know the first absorption is from here then it will uh, give into interstitium and then again the absorbed by the pctn okay we will discuss in detail uh, later on one more thing i want to say that this is the this th third step third step is wholly governed by starling forces okay here the pctn uh, the, the exchange of anything solutes or something we will discuss later on will be occurring on the basis of starling forces okay but this first step will be active or passive it will depend on some ion channels there will be some ion channels we will discuss later on okay first second third step then one more thing uh, we want to say that this is the this was upper interstitium okay and this is our pctn okay and the net reabsorption pressure net reabsorption pressure which is acting here is nearly 10 mm of hg i have told in that uh, here reabsorption will be occur purely on the basis of starling forces okay the net reabsorption pressure is 10 mm hg i am giving you the data 13 mm hg and colloidal osmotic pressure is 32 mm hg here and here the colloidal osmotic pressure is inter of interstitium is about 15 mm hg and the osmotic pressure that is 6 mm hg 15 6 and here 32 and 13 okay you can calculate and we will get net reabsorption pressure is about 10 mm of hg okay this is our interstitial space and this is pctn and we are seeing here that the, here there is high net reabsorption pressure but we, when we have discussed in normal capillaries there is only uh, 0.3 or 3, 0.3 was the difference but here 10 mm hg is difference so net uh, filtration is 10 into kf okay this we will discuss in later part okay okay and uh, next we are coming to that what proximal tubule absorb which types of ions is responsible for reabsorption of which is type of ions okay and the first it, it is it, in here in the proximal tubule all the glucose and amino acid are completely reabsorbed okay the second point is that the highest fraction of solute is also absorbed such as sodium potassium chloride calcium bicarbonate okay bicarbonate is very important we will discuss why i am saying that it is important sodium potassium chloride calcium bicarbonate these all are fully re, uh, fully not, not maximum part of these are reabsorbed here okay then the th the third part is most important highest fraction of h2o is also absorbed here it is nearly 65 to 70% okay and this is the obligatory absorption of water this is the course adjustment of s2 absorption in our body okay we will do fine adjustment of s2 absorption in uh, due to the action of adh and vasopressin we will discuss later on here it is a course adjustment of water this is 
obligatory absorption it is 65 to 70 percent will be absorbed obligatory okay this is the reabsorption what it will do next uh, we are coming to the secretion okay it all it also secretes some organic cations and anions okay which we will discuss later on now we are going to see some of the channels that is very important for this this was the lumen tubular lumen as we have discussed this is a cell joined by tight junction okay this is joined by tight junction tubular lumen and the cells first the important point is that uh, where is pain okay and that the cell facing the lumen is called as apical side of the cell okay and the cell facing the interstitium is known as baso lateral side okay this is known as baso lateral side this is known as apical side baso lateral side okay and on the baso lateral side there will be a sodium potassium atps okay you are all are knowing that it will pump 3 na plus outside and 2k plus inside the cell okay into the interstitium this is sodium potassium atps okay and the on the apical side of the cell there will be co-transporter okay this is a co-transporter co-transporter means once the sodium enters into the cell it will carry along with uh, it will carry glucose glucose or phosphate or amino acid okay so here there may be uh, three types of and so uh, on the apical side we will get co-transporter okay and this co-transporter will have three type maybe sodium glucose co-transporter sodium phosphate co-transporter and sodium amino acid co-transporter we are discussing about the pct uh, once you encounter pct you will get all the three co all the three here co-transporter and on the basolateral side you will get sodium potassium atps okay this is the most important part and uh, we are something more discussing about uh, sodium glucose co-transporter it is very important because i have told earlier that glucose is absorbed 100 percent about 100 percent here in pct okay sodium glucose transporter and there are many sodium glucose co-transporter but the here is sgl2 2 sodium dependent glucose transporter 2 okay it is responsible for 90 percent glucose transport it is responsible for 19 90 percent glucose transport okay whereas sglt1 it is responsible for 10 percent glucose transport this will be present on uh, as i have told you pct part okay and this is present on a straight part of proximal tubule okay we have discussed that uh, all the part of proximal tubule is not convoluted some is convoluted and some are straight the sglt1 is no present on a straight part and SGL2 2 is present on convoluted part okay and it is responsible for SGL2 is responsible for 90% glucose transport and SGLT1 is responsible for only 10% glucose transport again this was the lumen of PCT this was the cell okay I am taking one cell this time as we have discussed that uh, on the apical side of the PCT cells there will be the presence of sodium glucose co-transporter and other co-transporter along with sodium glucose co-transporters there will be the presence of sodium H plus anti-transport it can be denoted as NHX in many books okay this is sodium H plus exchanger or sodium H plus antipod because one sodium is going inside the cell and one H plus is going outside okay this is very important and uh, okay one sodium is going inside and one is going it is present on pct okay this is very important uh, and along with it on the basal lateral side there may be presence of leaky potassium channel through which potassium leaks outward okay leaky potassium channels sometimes also present here okay 
and this H plus is coming from H two CO three. H two CO three breaks into H plus and H CO three minus. Okay, H plus and H CO three minus. H CO three minus comes outside by this way, and sodium enters here, and H plus is going this. Okay, then the basolateral side we have uh, seen that there will be presence of first sodium, potassium, ATPase. Along with it is present leaky potassium channel. Along with the presence of sodium bicarbonate trans anti transport and the most important is this Na H antiport or and along with it co transporters. Okay, this is the uh, presence on the this side. Okay, and there is okay this much.